Welcome back to the class. We are uh, continuing with the same essay written by uh, the late uh, Shanmula Rege as an introduction to her edited work, uh, which as I told you in the previous class is a compilation of um, essays or, or articles that appeared in uh, Indian Sociological Bulletin, uh, Sociological Bulletin, the Journal of Indian Sociological uh, Society. So we were uh, looking into, into the introductory section of her essay where she talks about the kind of very uh, problematic uh, or an uneasy relationship between uh, gender studies and sociology. She was talking about how you know there are uh, different uh, approaches towards that or if you look into the trajectory of the evolution of sociology as a discipline, it was characterized by different uh, stages and, and she does not really agree with this kind of a, uh, that, that kind of a characterization of dividing of, 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 of explaining the relationship on the basis of different stages, but on the basis of different intellectual yonder, that's what she explained in the previous section. So now this section, uh, she is moving from, uh, from a sociology of women uh, to sociology of gender. Uh, much of the feminist scholarship of the last 25 years or more has been directed towards underlining the social construction of gender. It sought to establish sex as a biologically determined and gender as socially constructed. However, the constructionists do not agree over the causes of the sex-gender distinction. They vary over their conceptions of gender as a manifestation of the contingent stereotyping or the structural power relations. Moreover, the differences arise over whether one considers these structures in the singular or plural. So, um, this is about, uh, you know, about how uh, there is a, a radical transformation that has happened in our understanding of what constitutes gender. Uh, earlier, the more conventional understanding is that, uh, say, uh, sex is biological, okay, whereas the gender is social. That was the kind of a, uh, uh, of, of, of a uh, conventional uh, understanding that uh, uh, the, 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 the male or female categories are socially constructed, whereas the term sex is uh, a, a kind of a biologically assigned one. So that was seen as an understanding, but that has again kind of come to under uh, se uh, serious revisions. Now, they uh, vary over the conceptions of gender as manifestations of the, yeah. Now, however, the constructionists do not agree over the causes of this sex-gender distinction, okay, because this, this neat distinction between something as biological and something as cultural has been problematized and complicated further. They vary over the conceptions of gender as a manifestation of the contingent stereotyping or of the sex structural power relations. Moreover, differences arise over whether one considers these structures in singular or in plural. The issues of race were central in propelling these debates on gender in multiple structures of power. Uh, looking into how uh, these, uh, you know, uh, issues about uh, or, or how gender becomes a very important angle to look uh, to understand the kind of a racial relationship emerges as a major theme of discussion in the West. Several arguments were put forward to move beyond class and race as mere additive to gender. Uh, however, in the linguist turn in theory, gender theorization has shifted the focus from the material to discursive structures. How discourses create uh, gender became a very important uh, part of discussion later. In such discourse on gender, femininity and masculinity have no ontological foundations and is conceived as relational and contextual. So this uh, uh, kind of a uh, turn, a kind of a post-structuralist uh, turn looked into how uh, discourses are capable of creating this idea about something that is real uh, and, 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 and it has no uh, you know, basic uh, uh, you know, connection with the kind of uh, in, 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 in any, uh, any ontological connection to, uh, to, to that. The neat distinction between biological and socially constructed is rendered increasingly untenable as the body came to be seen as a transformed in social practice. So uh, as, as, we, as I mentioned earlier, this uh, neat distinction that something is biological and something is, is, is social, it was again, uh, you know, uh, considered uh, highly uh, problematic. And then, uh, for example, uh, uh, Butler's argument, it is a very, very, very important, um, you know, argument about performativity, how genders are, are products of performativity, uh, in, in which, is, which are socially uh, constructed, okay. So it is not based on uh, biological uh, sex, but rather it is a product of a discursive and performative, performative world. It must also designate the very apparatus by which sex is produced as natural. Butler's, yeah, this is a very important, uh, Judith Butler's very important argument. Thus, gender 
uh, is a construction with no necessary relationship to particular bodies or sexualities and in the final analysis appears as a manifestation of text and cultural practice. It is a very radical argument. I am using the term radical because uh, it is a very radical argument to say that the uh, gender has nothing to do with biological uh, characteristics because uh, if you look into the contemporary argument about transsexuality and, and about how there are a, a kind of a rainbow of, of sexualities within, within uh, each, each bodies, uh, it, it, it tells you that the, uh, the, 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 the biological determinism is, is almost absent or, or your, what is your body in, in medical science or in, in biological science has nothing to do with your gender orientations or your gender uh, interests and then identities. With this cultural turn, gender of feminist theorization appears more as a cultural difference than a uh, social hierarchy and feminist politics is surrounded, uh, is surrendered along with meta-narratives. Jackson advocates a sociological feminism as a corrective to the cultural turn and delineates four in, uh, intersecting levels of social construction, namely the structural, the discursive, the everyday lives and the subjective. Yeah. Uh, now, the study of gender in sociology first emerged in the research on sex roles. Under the influence of role theory and functionalism, gender was conceived as an, as an achieved status accompanied by a set of patterned gender roles. This is again, you know, something that we uh, mentioned earlier, how in the initial period, sociology, uh, was, sociology preoccupied with the questions of gender, but mostly uh, as an uncritical acceptance of uh, gender roles as a, as a kind of a taken for granted uh, category. Now, these are all uh, kind of elaborations about how uh, that, uh, you know, different scholars looked into this kind of category and how it evolved in, in uh, classical sociological uh, thing, which I don't think we uh, need to go through that in detail. Now, uh, this gender remains much contested, but as an indispensable concept. Contested because some scholars challenge this shift from women to gender and, and indispensable to others because they see it as allowing for a more inclusive analysis of human experience based on intersecting structures of domination, difference and diversity. Feminists with varying intellectual frames of reference have put forth diverse positions about privileging the category of gender over women. Now, uh, again this question, whether sociology of women, uh, what should be the, 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 the proper nomenclature? What should be the actual name? Should it be sociology of women or should it be sociology of gender? And of course, uh, I think the jury is out. Now, uh, no, no, most of the uh, sociologists, they, they include, they consider gender as a more, uh, you know, inclusive, more broader category than that of the women. Now, the shift from women to gender has been viewed by some as a replacement of the study of sexual inequality with the study of differences between the sexes. Uh, they make the case of the continuing usefulness of the term women for analysis as against the category of gender. And especially uh, because, uh, you know, one of the important arguments against this particular turn from women to gender is that many times it takes away the kind of a political orientation of the study. Because sociology of women uh, had this political uh, orientation or the political uh, inclination to look at uh, the subordination of women in, in almost every, every sphere of its study. Or, or it had that uh, stated uh, objective of focusing on the inequality, the question of inequality that women were, 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 were suffering. Whereas the sociology of gender does not have that focus on inequality. Rather, it looks at how discursively different genders are produced, and and then and and then how uh, you know it intersects both culturally and and socially. The category of gender is seen as diverting the focus from specific issues concerning women, both in the political and academic sphere. However, feminists, especially third world black and Dalit feminists, have underlined the dangers of presuming a set of common meanings at the category of women. Something that we discussed. They have argued that the category of women universalizes and homogenizes the experience of white, middle class and upper caste women, something that we discussed earlier. On the other hand, the use of the category of gender allows for the analysis of differences of race, class, caste, nation and sexual orientations between women. The use of the category of women assumes commonality between all women and can at best allow the analysis of the differences among women in uh, additive or known or add on manner. So. Uh, the, the 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 debate between these two sections of people who uh, is is still uh, on but uh, a large number of people feel that the term gender uh, is more inclusive because women do not constitute a singular category and women experience across the globe uh, is not the same whereas the gender 
offers you a more broader category to look into the specific manifestations of gender in the interstices of different race, caste, class, ethnicity and national contexts. In the analysis of caste-based society, for instance, such an assumption of commonality amounts to a reiteration of the normative status of the upper caste woman. Okay, if you uh, look into, uh, uh, for example, um, uh, the, the 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 question of caste and and woman, most of the time, um, it is the experience of the upper caste woman that is kind of naturalized, that is seen as the norm, whereas the lived experience of the women of the lower caste could be entirely different, especially when you talk about say notions of purity and, and other, other things, the, 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 the usual argument or, or the usual picture that is presented is that of the upper caste woman is seen as the normal and, uh, and, and, and the experience of lower caste women which could be very entirely different are not accounted for. Yeah. For those of us concerned with the engendering sociology, it means moving from a sociology of women to a more inclusive sociology of gender. As Moore has argued, it was not until the anthropology of women was able to make room for gender that its potential uh, uh, to politically, uh, to fundamentally reconceptualize could be more fully realized. So, Sharmila Rage is of a very uh, firm opinion uh, that the term gender is, of course, definitely much more inclusive and more, 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 it has more potential than that of the sociology of uh, gender. Uh, sociology of women. Uh, sociology of gender in India towards a reading more than absence of women. Feminist sociological uh, knowledge has posed challenges to the intellectual concerns of sociology as also the ways in which discipline is organized professionally and uh, institutionally. Now this she uh, trains her focus to the Indian context which is more uh, you know of course interest to us. The challenges posed by feminist scholarship to the content uh, to the content, methodology and epistemology of the discipline can be more easily enumerated than those posed in the organizational and institutional practices. The systematic reviews of the development of sociology in India uh, by all these scholars, okay, uh, Danagre, Mukherjee, Uman and uh, Yogendra Singh and Unitan provide a framework for anal analyz analyzing the trends in Indian sociology over the years. Almost all commentators see origins of social anthropology and sociology in counter uh, in the encounter between colonial administration and Indian society, the Occident and the Orient, and tradition and modernity. Okay, this is a theme which we will take up again when we discuss uh, Sujata Patel's uh, uh, argument. Travelogues, tracts, studies on caste, tribes, village communities, language and land tenural systems are seen as inspired by the need for a basic data of colonial administration. The indigenous sociological imagination of the social reformers, often referred to as the pre-sociological reference groups by Mukherjee, constituted the beginnings of the discipline. Okay? The most commentators argue that this indigenous pre-sociological intellectual tradition, however, influenced the later development of Indian sociology and social anthropology only uh, influenced the later development of Indian sociology and social anthropology only marginally. Uh, a search for the origin of the visible woman in Indian, Indian sociology would lead us to argue otherwise. So she is uh, saying that the kind of a, the uh, there is an argument especially put forward by uh, Mukherjee and uh, Dhanagre that the pre-sociological, uh, uh, you know, uh, tradition mostly by uh, social reformers, okay, social reformers within Hinduism, uh, those who argued against caste, those who argued against uh, child marriage and, 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 and widow, uh, uh, those who campaigned for widow remarriage. All these things did not have much of an uh, influence on the later development of sociology, according to scholars like Dhanagri and Mukherjee, but uh, Sharmila Rege and a lot of others do not agree with that. Uh, the agenda of the liberal reformists and revivals of the 19th century set the counters for the women in sociology in the cognitive structures of the discipline. Okay, this, the space within sociological discourse came to be granted either to the women in the text or in the middle class women in the context of modernization. So, uh, so their argument was that the kind of a social reform movement uh, spearheaded by upper class men, upper caste class and upper caste women uh, who basically wanted to reform Hinduism, okay? who basically wanted to reform Hinduism and to get it off uh, of all its impurities and so called uh, traditional uh, and, and unmodern and traditional customs, uh, kind of it, it really privileged the, the upper class and upper caste uh, uh, women, uh, upper, upper caste sections of the population. So she, she says that how the, the movements from lower castes were hardly recognized 
or social leaders from lower caste positions were hardly recognized by the uh, by the early uh, sociologists and and that is that is that is true even with with history as well as a discipline the yeah so now this is again a discussion about the development of sociology about how sociology as a discipline was you know earlier uh, combined with uh, economics uh, especially in uh, in in delhi university and and other places it was it was a part of the economics uh, department and even in lucknow so later how so so it, it talks about how that scenario evolved now um, while studies on family kinship studies caste social structure in village and problems of urbanization emerge in bombay calcutta produce large scale social surveys on tribes uh, peasantry and famines the work at lekhno suggested that the rigid boundaries between the disciplines be reviewed critically and dp mukherjee even suggested the need for the sociologist to turn from description to prescription that could emerge only from uh, stated value choices so it's a uh, it's a uh, you know uh, recall uh, into the evolution of sociology i think here there is a uh, interesting reference about an obituary to ar wadia c parvatamma recalls his explicitly stated and acted upon opposition to the caste system uh, and the inmate links between sociology of humanism and that he sought to explore this this particular name c parvatamma is a very very interesting uh, you know scholar she was a dalit and and she went to uh, she went abroad and then she got a phd and she was contemporary to uh, uh, mn she was and and, and 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 she was the head of the department uh, of mysore university for a long time has written extensively so uh, her, her her life itself has been you know um, uh, has been quite quite interesting and quite inspiring on various counts uh, especially given the fact that a, a dalit girl from a very difficult background her father had passed away when she was very young and uh, she had to face a lot of challenges and then she rose uh, into a much higher position within indian sociology uh, uh, in, in 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 mysore so parvatamma is considered to be a very important uh, uh, person so airavathi carve's uh, exploration another very uh, important person Uh, in, into the issues of issues related to marriage, family, motherhood, using legends and folk songs, her essays, novels, and short stories need deliberation. Carve has often been excluded despite her encyclopedic work, and the reason suggested has been that the work is outdated. So, looking into that, this the pre-institutionalized phase of history of the discipline can be read as more than a just sociology of the absence of women. the task in sociology unlike the history or economics or literature was not that of making visible the invisible woman the central importance accorded to the study of family kinship and marriage in sociology had meant that women had been visible but their experience has been uh, ignored so she is talking about the uh, it's a, it's a uh, generalization about the pre institutionalized phase so a pre institutionalized phase uh, is we is often referred to as the time before 1950s because sociology as a discipline gets institutionalized after 1950s uh, in in the form of having a organization having a uh, you know establishing in different places having a journal and and other things so in the pre institutionalized phase it was mostly that of a uh, uh, absence of uh, that however feminist critic of the discipline in the 1980s began to underline the wide gap between everyday works of women and the sociological knowledge the most immediate task at the time seemed to be uh, to underline the mainstream as the male stream okay mainstream as the male stream thereby articulating a one dimensional feminist disenchanting of sociology the focus therefore was uh, on the underlining of the invisibility of social of women in sociology a more discerning sensitivity is probably called for in reading gender in the different phases of the growth of discipline it is important to trace the influence of the particular trajectory of the institutional expansion of the discipline in india did the institutional expansion adversely affect the visibility of women in the cognitive structures of the discipline why did gender not become a variable for sociological analysis in the phase that brought visibility to the sociologists in india these are only some of the questions that feminist sociologists need to address the institutional expansion began in 1952 as the knowledge methods of sociologists and social anthropology became usable by the state uh, usable again is in inverted comma as you think because state always has a will have a very very narrow uh, view towards scholarship state wants the data the policy briefing the policy orientation that can be applied to uh, uh, to a society for certain developmental perspectives but of course you know that uh, as 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 we know a discipline is capable of much more it is capable of asking more deeper broader questions uh, 
and 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 without any 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 concrete answers uh, to which the state need not be much of uh, show show much of an interest. So sociologists were required to outline the social determinants and consequences of state-sponsored development. So 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 that uh, uh, she's talking about and also about how say uh, university grants commission, UGC sanctioned several posts in sociology, and uh, important note that courtesy to the community development program. And the Ford Foundation meant a strong dose of modern survey research methods imported from United States. Research technology, became, uh, research technology became the need for the day and was neither uh, the inclination nor the time to reflect on substantive use of methodology. Okay, because uh, again, uh, when you look into the data or the, the quantitative uh, research, uh, quite often quantitative research is not uh, really. Uh, it, it 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 many times does not play adequate attention to the problematics of the categories that they use okay because uh, one of the important uh, uh, you know promises of quantitative uh, data quantitative research method is that it is a, it 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 gives you a bird's eye view of 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 the scenario at hand okay it gives you much uh, specific categories it it tells you things uh, in 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 broader uh, strokes and and at the same time, uh, a, a lot of things go unnoticed. Okay, it it is uh, it, it does not have the ability to go into the, the the problematics of the categories that many times are used in these things, and 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 that is exactly that what uh, uh, she is talking about. This period of visibility for sociologists saw an estrangement of the discipline from history, economics, and political science. This phase of institutionalization came almost close to what feminist critic conceives as of the invisibility of women in the discipline. The earlier voice of the theoretical pluralism and myth of value-free social sciences were almost lost under the burden of institutionalization of the paradigmatic axioms of structural functionalism and research uh, technology. That is the, she's kind of, uh, you know, covering, uh, talking about the trajectory. The trend reports of Indian Council for Social Science Research, as you might know, uh, ICSSR is a, very important governmental body that uh, uh, funds uh, social science research in India. ICSSR has, uh, I think, around 25 uh, to 30 research centers across India. So ICSSR is considered to be the most important nodal agency that regulates and funds social science research. Uh, suggests that in addition to caste stratification studies, social change, family marriage industry, uh, Managerialism, urban and rural society became the areas of core concern. Yeah. The extent to which such studies were influenced by the radical new social movement of the period is debatable. The number of these theses on Dalit communities marked an increase, but the epistemologic claim that the Dalit movement were not uh, addressed. Okay. Uh, again, uh, there were studies on you know the the, the so far neglected uh, areas, but uh, they kind of failed to. Uh, really make use of the the, the, the potentials of, of its uh, differential epistemology was very much noted. These studies are clearly limited to the marginal man in Indian uh, society and his relative deprivation, his reference groups and social mobility. So these studies on Dalits looked at this particular category as people who have been neglected so that we are studying them. But uh, at the same time, they were not really capable of theorizing their experiences of this 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 uh, uh, people and then use those understanding to critique the mainstream uh, sociology as we will discuss this Gopal Guru much later uh, in, in, in the coming uh, class. There are several studies in the Muslim community, most of which feminize uh, the community. These studies center on the problems of Muslim women, namely talaq, parda and lower rates of education. This as observed by Oberoi, uh, differentiation seems to cut across sexual hierarchy only among the communal lines. Now. Uh, it, this, this is about the different governmental initiatives of, uh, you know, draft and national plan and uh, UGC's different approval, uh, women's studies centers, the institution of uh, all those uh, arguments. The dominant explanatory framework is the Parsonian paradigm of two roles uh, of women and the role conflict. Such a cognitive frame necessarily excludes the possibility of any analysis of the source of gender inequality in the public and private spheres. Thus, a concern with gender disparities in socialization ends on plea for an attitudinal change while those concerning rural women prescribe modernization as a solution. So, uh, she is uh, critically evaluating the kind of uh, basic premises on which the studies were carried out during uh, this 1970s and 80s. 
the challenges posed by feminist scholarship and women's movements to these receive frameworks in sociology of caste, family, kinship, marriage, work and certification have been well analyzed. The feminist scholarship as noted by the scholars have been largely interdisciplinary and in a sense therefore outside the purview of the typical uh, student of sociology prior to the introduction of course of sociology of women. Interdisciplinary feminist challenges if taken note of are often disciplined in this thesis. Strategic exclusions, inclusions of the feminist challenges have to be managed in order to avoid the perennial questions about the sociological nature of the content and methodology. So uh, she is talking about how uh, the overall institutional uh, culture kind of uh, you know became more stifling to this kind of a more uh, engaged feminist critic and, and many of them had to go by uh, the, 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 the mainstream thing. And uh, the boundaries of good sociology are drawn around general laws, scientific methods and uh, sequentializing uh, human reality. The core of the discipline is sustained through a taken for granted ways of conceiving, preconceiving social reality despite an expansion in the subject matter. Uh, often includes the marginalized subjects. The marginalized be they women, Dalit, Adivasis or the laboring class despite their inclusion in the substantive areas remain on periphery of the cognitive structures of the discipline. And uh, 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 she also mentions this uh, uh, very uh, um, kind of very controversial uh, uh, remarks made by very prominent uh, Indian sociologist Dibangar Gupta um, against uh, the the, the, the feminist, the, the potential of feminist uh, scholarship in social theory and also by uh, Andre Bethe uh, uh, during uh, 90s which created a lot of discussion and debate among, uh, among women. So Gupta's views on feminization of theory and Bethe's views on feminism in the academy are present examples of the dismissals of feminist scholarship by socialists in India. As Telis has observed, the strategy employed in such a dismissal is one of the, one of relegating a prurient, trivial and unacademic any uh, academic and political writings on gender. So, uh, especially Gupta, uh, Dibangar Gupta came under uh, heavy criticism for, uh, for, for uh, you know, making a, um, uh, for, for trivializing the, the feminist scholarship or making uh, a, a caricature of feminist theory. Uh, and and Bethe's uh, argument was more, more nuanced, but even he argued that a feminist lens would lead only to a kind of a ghettoization of sociological knowledge and, and other things. Yeah, Gupta's very controversial uh, thing. Uh, feminist studies therefore largely about how women give life and about how they know about life, about childbirth, about menstruation, about suffering without adequate symbols or even about the joy of lesbianism. They underline the gross distortion of Gupta's readings and feminist theory and the omission of any discussion of Indian feminism. The intellectual arrogance of male academics in dismissing an entire system of thought and movement with cursory examination in the sequence uh, of its histories was sharply critic. All these you know, people criticized uh, uh, Gupta you know that all, all of them came in the same year 1995. However, assuming that all of women's studies is exclusionary, uh, it's it's about Bethe. Uh, he concludes uh, on a different note. He argues that unless diverse viewpoints, the perspectives of both the sexes are accommodated, women's studies would damage the credibility of the very institutions in which they are located. Both sociologists who call feminist scholarship into question have contributed much to the theoretical development of stratification studies. So both Bethe as well as uh, uh, you know, uh, Gupta, have, they, they are some of the very important pioneers in the study of Indian uh, social stratification. Sociological Bulletin since the 1950s, a history is from the borderland. So this section, I am not uh, engaging it because it is a uh, discussion about what were the main argument uh, articles published in sociological, uh, you know, bulletin uh, which, uh, you know, looked into, in, in, into different aspects of that. It is a very uh, interesting section. Now, the crisis in contemporary sociology and feminist reflexivity. Um, one of the earliest voices in the debate, uh, there has been articulations of the crisis in the discipline of 1970s and 1990s. So, this particular section is about uh, a, a, a debate that emerged from 1980s uh, onwards, 1980s and of course more, more, more visibly in 90s and, and 2000 about the kind of uh, crisis that sociology as a discipline was facing because sociology is often seen as a one of the most reflexive uh, disciplines, a discipline that is capable of looking within and then understanding, uh, uh, trying to understand the way in which the discipline is practiced in different institutional set settings and social settings and thereby try to change itself. So uh, this particular section, uh, Sharmila Rege tries to understand uh, the kind of a debates around this question of contemporary, uh, about uh, the 
question of uh, crisis in sociology and what uh, it can learn from the uh, feminist reflexivity in what is so so there are there, there is again uh, from 1970s onwards there has been a series of discussions about what uh, is the reason for this crisis and what can be done uh, to that so in in bethe rice in 1973 the theoretical side of the course is always important uh, argument one of the major of course one of the concerns is that we always uh, we don't produce theories rather we import theories from the west and the indian uh, society is uh, seen as the field in which these theories can be tested okay empirically is left for the sociology of india so we uh, in order to study say stratification for example we go by we go uh, with marx or weber we get theory from there and then we try to test those theories on the indian reality okay there is hardly any attempt to theorize from India and then export that theory to others. This has been a perennial question. A heavy reliance on American textbooks not only reflects the reality unfamiliar to students, but also tends to present reality in overtly abstract forms. Yeah. Now, there is, uh, again, uh, I am not going into those that, but uh, those who want to look into the trajectory of these, these questions of, of, of tracing the crisis of the discipline, these are important sections. It is about uh, Lakshmana and, and others. And uh, this uh, in 1990s, Vinadas uh, comes up with uh, interesting um, arguments. And then, uh, you know, uh, this 90s, later, late 90s, um, others. So, significant uh, in the debate in 1990s is the tension between varying conceptions of the crisis itself. The crisis is conceived as one of the protocols of learning and irrelevance for tradition and the sociologist's ambition to be an agent for social change. This is challenged by a more heightened sensitivity to the history of the growth and teaching of sociology in India. The crisis is then conceived as one of the paradigms or one of the usability of the lack of reflexivity. So there are a lot of critics, uh, cries, uh, you know, criticism about how even this crisis is seen. Okay, because for example, when uh, some scholars say that uh, there is a lack of standards or there is a lack of uh, rigor in academia. Then there are questions about uh, this whole idea about about what constitutes standards, what constitutes rigor, okay, and how uh, uh, how this discipline is practiced. Who are the people who come to study sociology, or what has what has been their social background, and how does what does the discipline offer to them? Uh, so a lot of such questions kind of animated the debate uh, during the time. So as Patel argues, the crisis is undoubtedly one of the paradigms and lack of reflexivity, for it had been. Uh, for if it had been one of the protocols, it should not have affected the senders of excellence that observe the protocols of academization of the subject. Several voices in this debate, all not overtly feminist, suggest the need for reflexivity. This is a more than encouraging trend and feminist activists in the academia suggest that we grasp the moment of reflexivity. Now, this section, uh, again, she goes into some of the uh, very, very interesting uh, you know, literature on, on how reflexivity itself is understood because reflexivity as the ability to look into one's own uh, past and one's own uh, action is, is a very superficial understanding. There have been you know, multiple definitions about how reflexivity works. So, feminist analytical uh, reflexivity shifts the sole focus of the debate on the crisis in the discipline from questions of what we teach to the questions of whom we teach and how. Okay. So, instead of looking into what the sociology offers and, and, and how the syllabus is organized, what are the contents of it, what are the things that are included, what are the things that are not included. So, focus shifted from that kind of a concerns to the kind of concerns about whom we teach and how. This leads us to the questions about the conception of the crisis itself. How is the crisis in a discipline defined, assumed and by whom? As Bourdieu has suggested, the crisis that is referred to is the crisis of an orthodoxy and that there may be a high co correlation between the types of cultural capital that is at the disposal of the sociologists and their conceptions of legitimate sociology and of a crisis. So this is a very, very important uh, section, okay? Uh, how different people, practitioners uh, with different cultural capital uh, and, and, and uh, cultural capital can uh, conceive crisis in a different way. For example, a, a professor uh, who, who uh, comes from a very elite background, who is educated abroad, can lament about the lack of uh, standard or, or the inability of the Indian students to read the originals of Marx and, and, then, and then Weber and say that, okay, these people do not have the uh, sufficient standards. But a standard is understood as the ability to read the originals and then uh, engage in critical uh, thinking. So, this is a very, very uh, elitist understanding of, of what 
constitutes academic rigor and academic standard. Uh, uh, or in other words, it, it has a sociology. Why that a particular section of uh, population uh, students are not able to read has a sociology behind it. And without understanding that sociology, then defining the rigor in a very specific manner has become very myopic. In a survey of seven universities in Maharashtra Reggae, several college teachers linked the following standards of the discipline to the recruitment of policies of the state and to the decline in financial grants and schemes. In bemoaning the following standards and declining of merit, the blame is placed uh, on the character of sociology as a residual discipline. Enrollment records did bear out the increasing number of women, Dalits and Bahujan students and practitioners in the discipline. Moreover, for many of them, the crisis was one of the representation about relation between the sociologists in here and the people out there. The former are no longer the only ones who represent the latter in what Stanley calls as a helvet placard photo real print style. They out here intent uh, if they possibly can do their own representation. So, uh, this is a, 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 again about uh, how the uh, when, when, when the student population undergo significant changes, uh, how their classroom experience or how what they what they read and what they study sociology is very different from their lived experience. So, so that is what the kind of a crisis that she is talking about. Now, curriculum, pedagogy and the sociology of gender. Now, uh, this again is about how uh, the sociology of, 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 of uh, gender uh, kind of gets reflected in the uh, curriculum and pedagogy uh, in Indian universities. Also looks into how, uh, you know, uh, this also looks into the SNDT University in Mumbai and uh, Nira Desai writes uh, how SNDT had a more interesting take on that. Now, doing sociology of uh, women gender experience from the field. So, this uh, represents uh, Sharmila Rage's own study of uh, some of the, how some of the universities uh, engage in, uh, in these questions. The response to, uh, to feminist critique of the discipline, namely inclusion, separatism and reconceptualization are reflected in the ways in which gender is accommodated in the curriculum. In the absence of gender in the mainstream or core courses in sociology, all of gender was included in one optional course. So, so that's that's how because uh, in spite of this much of criticism and critique from gender studies or feminist perspective, gender con uh, gender uh, continue to be one of the optional courses rather than uh, getting more integrated into the mainstream uh, uh, courses and 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 the main core courses continue to be taught in the same old fashion. So, that, that, that's a uh, you know, finding from many of these empirical uh, studies. A survey of the teaching and the academic uh, and conditions of productions of dissemination of social knowledge in the five regional universities in Maharashtra, undertaken during 1999 and 2000, suggests the existence of a many worlds of the sociology in India. The syllabi of the undergraduate and postgraduate levels reveal that the common to the curriculum are courses derived from three distinct legacies, courses that could be broadly categorized as general sociology, sociological theories, research methodology and contemporary Indian society represent these three legacies. The legacy of the founding fathers, methodological legacy of quantitative techniques and the civic legacy of the substantive topics. And uh, again, how it uh, represents the kind of a uh, lack of uh, focus on women. The core sociological tradition uh, thus remains firmly embedded in the patriarchal Brahminical notions while the optional courses make sure that all marginalized are represented. However, a preliminary attempt to map the matrix of domination, caste, class and gender as it appears in the courses and prescribed readings confirm the lack of interconnectedness and absence of a lived experience in the syllabi. Thus, the mediations between experience, history and sociological categories are near absent. So, this is a very, very uh, uh, insightful uh, uh, argument about how the syllabi are framed in most of the universities. Okay? Uh, they are done still done in a mechanical manner. Uh, there are of course papers on tribes and caste and Dalits and women, but they are all uh, as a kind of an appendage, uh, and not as something uh, you know uh, integrated well within the main mainstream body of the discipline. This presents a problem for feminist pedagogies, which seek to subvert the academy as the sole custodian of higher learning. Feminist pedagogy. Uh, seems like a contradiction in terms because feminism refers to an alternative worldview while pedagogy in its conventional sense suggests the education for entry into a patriarchal system. So, 
feminist pedagogy explicitly confronts the popularly understood division between the public and private, between reason and emotion, and legitimizes personal experience as an appropriate arena of intellectual activity. As we mentioned, uh, these, these, these arguments are highly uh, important, okay, how uh, emotion is many times is often seen as irrational, whereas uh, feminist theorization, uh, you know, uh, quarrels with that kind of, uh, of, 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 of argument. And again, this uh, strict distinction between private and public, between personal and political, uh, all these boundaries have been thoroughly scrambled and questioned by the feminist uh, scholarship. It is recognized that the teachers and students alike bring text of their own to the classroom, which shape the transactions within them, okay, how, uh, uh, you know, the, the texts are read and understood differently, even the same texts are read and understood differently, so, so, so those arguments. Pedagogies such, such as feminist ones, which are to voice and explore the unexpressed and marginalized perspectives have to be collaborative, cooperative and interactive. This requires that the concepts be treated not as given but as common vocabularies to be built by making explicit connections between theory, research and experience. Feminist ped uh, pedagogy centers on, on four common themes an enduring connectedness of the live, living and concrete, emphasize on the participation and interaction, collaboration and cooperation and teaching with a vision. Connectedness to the living and concrete is now narrowly interpreted as applied knowledge but calls for a historical perspective on, on the knowledge which then invites students to personalize the domain of study through participation and sharing of lived experience. Small discussion groups, contact outside of classroom, sharing of teaching, re, uh, reading material and use of drama and theater techniques are found to initiate collaboration and cooperation. Teaching with a vision involves passionate pedagogy which emerges from being involved in the issues that we study and in different from uh, either indoctrination or preaching. Okay, very, very important insightful uh, arguments uh, for those who, uh, you know, uh, take the, the whole question of teaching, teaching learning seriously. Such pedagogies, therefore, strive towards authenticity as a notion of empowerment and not a mere reversal of social power. Located in the context of interlocking oppressions, several questions confront feminist pedagog pedagogues. How do we teach comparatively and relatively, relationally about gender, caste and class arrangements while addressing questions crucial to the historical moment? Reflexive and critical approaches that map the differential privileges given to different groups in knowledge production becomes crucial to understanding the structures of domination. So, are very, very important uh, uh, question. How can, in the words of Goldner, the gap between reflexivity out there and reflexivity in here be bridged? The issues of feminist sociologists is to move beyond the rhetoric of analysis of caste, class and gender. At the level of pedagogies, the challenges is one of promoting reflexivity in our classrooms in the sense that Goldner outlined it. With the increasing number of marginalized entering the discipline, its part partisanship can be unmasked by a sociological imagination that grasps history and biography and the relationship between the two within society. And again, this is a very, very, uh, you know, important one. The connection, Peter Berger talks about it. Almost every classical sociologist talk about this connection between uh, history and biography, how uh, you, you look into that. So, uh, so this, this remaining section, I'm not going into the details. It's uh, uh, time. Uh, talks about how uh, despite, uh, you know, continuous efforts uh, and, and to a large extent the inclusion of gender and women into Indian sociology, uh, but the actual revolutionary potential of a feminist uh, framework has been kind of absent in uh, Indian uh, sociology. So, uh, that is what uh, she uh, talks about in this particular uh, uh, essay uh, on engendering sociology and essays on feminist social. So, so this is this uh, but uh, about this particular uh, work, uh, this particular uh, essay, uh, this edited work, as we mentioned. So, um, so this is the introductory essay. As I uh, uh, we we conclude now, I hope you would have understood that Reggae uh, is is full of insights about how uh, she not only provides a uh, history of the engagement between sociology and gender studies, but she also uh, is uh, really uh, you know inspirational in terms of the possibilities of 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 bringing in feminist uh, perspectives and feminist pedagogies to to make the discipline of sociology more more inclusive more sensitive and more uh, you know capable of offering more more insightful analysis about the about, about the field that we study and it also uh, becomes a it also becomes a reflection on the practice of discipline uh, that is sociology in india okay so let's uh, stop here and we'll meet for the coming class thank you